some mornings people just need a little bit of kick in their coffee. Yes. A little bit of boost. And I will say, so do you drink coffee? I do. I do drink coffee, yes. So my husband doesn't, so I have a Keurig. And I didn't mm -hmm. start drinking coffee until um, a few years ago. I think it was like when I was doing the morning show for Fox 2. You get up at 2 in the morning, oh, yeah. you, you know, you're like, ah. you, you need that. At that point. Um, but before that, I've never really uh, drank coffee. And then once you kind of go down that coffee trail, you mm -hmm. need it in the mornings. But, um, you know, sometimes uh, you just need a little extra kick, like St. Patty's Day. I'm sure a lot of people were doing oh, yeah. this. Well, I love this because our next guest, Paul Borozan, he is the co-founder of Cask and Kettle. They were sitting around a morning meeting and someone said, it is a tough day. I think I need a little shot in my coffee. Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey. Why not? You're probably not alone. And that is where the thought was born to come up with Cask and Kettle. With us now is Pete. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, so uh, tell us first, um, where can you buy your product? <laughs> I think that's the most important thing, right? Yeah. So we're sold in 16 states. Michigan is obviously one of them. It's our home state. We're based in Battle Creek. The best way to actually find us is to go to our website, which is cask, A-N-D, caskandkettleusa.com. And we've got a store locator, but we're sold in, you know, hundreds of stores in Michigan, most of them small independents. So with that, um, what has this process been like for you to come up with a new product? Give us the background on what is your background and how do you come up with this product? And it's one thing to be sitting around, um, you know, a, a, a newsroom or, sorry, not a newsroom, but a business meeting and mention it, but then it's another thing to say, hey, there could be something there and then get it into the stores. Yeah, so we worked, the four founders worked for a small food consultancy in Battle, very successful food consultancy in Battle Creek, and does a wide range of things. One of them is formulation. So we were sitting around a meeting, as you mentioned, and it was a rough meeting, and my CEO, who's in the right, said, boy, I could really use a coffee, and um, she said, but only if it had alcohol in it. So we'd been playing around in the business with making drinks for others, you know, concentrates, not alcoholic drinks, but regular drinks. And um, I thought we could make a pretty good drink with booze in it. So we started playing around with it and pretty quickly we could get to a pretty good drink, just not, you know, just formulating around not seriously. And then we put our serious formulators on it and they came up with some great drinks. It took a while to develop them because we're very finicky, being food people, we're very taste driven. Um, so it took about a year to get the first drink really right, but we think we really hit it. So. And what has been the response since you've been on the store shelves? We're doing really well. So the first year was, you know, you, you, you spend a lot of money because we're really creating a category, which is the complete hot cocktail that you can use in a Keurig machine. Um, so you spend a lot of money in your first two years getting people to know what it is and believe in that you can actually make a good drink out of your Keurig directly. Um, but we tripled sales last year off a pretty good first year and we think we're gonna triple again this year. So we're pretty excited about the trajectory that the business is going on. And how much do you think the pandemic has contributed to that because so many people are working from home? Yeah, there's no question that um, spirit sales um, are up, that in you know the home consumption is up. I would say in 2020, believe it or not, it actually hurt us because we weren't distributed widely enough. Uh -huh. And then when um, at the end of 2020, when things started breaking loose and we could go out and sell again, we got distributed a lot more widely. And, and toward the end of 2020, re sales really took off. So going into 2021, what we would say is if COVID was a bit of a headwind in 2020, it's a tailwind in 2021. And we've actually sold more product this year than we did through the end of September last year already. So you can just see how the business is really starting to get momentum. So how does this work? What is the formula behind the little pod? So it's really simple. You know, what we do is we use concentrates. So the concept is simple is you take concentrates that are liquid, that haven't had the flavors really baked out of them, like a lot of powders do, and you put them in a, in a cured K-cup. Um, which is this thing here. 
and then the liquid sits in here and when you drop it into your machine and put the clamp down and hit the button the liquid coffee and the liquid spirit which is also concentrated and a natural flavor all come out at the same time so you have a ready to drink hot cocktail right out of your keurig machine there's no you know additional work that you have to do now if you want to doctor it up yourself you can do that you know a lot of people want to do they want it sweeter or they want to add a cream to it or something like that um, and we encourage that we like creativity but the whole idea is that you know if you're relaxing on the couch at night and you want a hot cocktail it's really simple to just run over to the keurig machine and have one this is so interesting that uh, you not only develop this, but you've taken it to market on top of that. And um, what are the flavors? I would think like uh, this past um, St. Patrick's Day, you pr we're probably pretty popular, right? Oh, yeah. So we've got four flavors, four coffee flavors right now. So Irish coffee is our best seller. Um, that's this guy here. And that one is a really strong, this one and the Mexican coffee, which is a tequila based coffee. They're really strong on the, what I would say the spirit forward. So the first thing when you taste Irish coffee is like Irish whiskey. The first thing when you taste our Mexican coffee is tequila. So those are the two that I would say are very spirits forward drinks. And then we have two others that are a vodka background. That's our mint patty, which is awesome. And then our hot blonde, which is a vanilla coffee, which one of our taste testers referred to, which I thought was really cute. She called it a hug in a mug. This thing is like a hug in a mug. So um, these are more the, of the flavor of the mint and the vanilla, where the other two are more of the flavor of the spirit, but they also have some really great back notes that go with them as well. Being food people, you know, it's really the taste. We don't think of it as like, you know, a boozed up coffee. We think of it as a taste experience with alcohol. So it's a, it's really a flavor experience in all of our drinks. Pete Bor is on with us here on the Mega Cast. He's the co-founder for Cask and Kettle. With that, um, probably not a hard job to get a lot of coworkers to want to be taste testers, right? Oh yeah. Well, we we joke around when we first started doing it. We were doing a lot of taste testing at work while we were still working for the food consultancy while we were getting the business going. Um, so we used to refer to that as our, our day drinking. So, <laughs> you know, we would be tasting, taste testing stuff all day during the day. And then obviously we'd have to allow a cooling off period before we went home so we could, you know, drive and stuff like that. But yeah, there was a lot of taste testing that went on. All good. Uh, and Pete, though, I think people are wondering, too, like, well, we're used to getting our coffee in a K-cup now, but even that was an adjustment back in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But how do you concentrate alcohol to get it to, to fit into this formula? So it's really interesting, you know, you, and I didn't know, that's a good question, because I didn't know the answer to that either when we first started. And when you look at how alcohol is made, it's made in a concentrated form. So that's where the cask comes from in the cask and kettle, which is a cask strength alcohol, which is a full strength alcohol. And then what the, the companies do, the spirits companies do, when you buy it is they actually dilute it with water. So, we, you know, we just, we put it in at full strength and then we just wait until the Keurig comes along to do the dilution to get it down to a, a reasonable strength. So it's just the distillation process drives water off and then you get, you know, highly concentrated alcohol. This is really fascinating to me, but what I love even more is it started with just a generic conversation but you're around people who are innovators so what advice would you have to other people who um, come across these thoughts and these ideas but they just kind of sit there yeah no you, you know we we actually took about a year to decide if we were going to go to market and you know it's like do we think we can get people head head wrapped around this you know I mean and that was a big thing for us. And, and there's still a group of people like, well, it's just the flavor. It's not, it doesn't really have alcohol in it, right? Like, no, it's the whole thing. <laughs> so, but yeah, so I would say, you know, you got to do it. And the one thing, the one piece of advice that I would give any entrepreneur is you got to be able to raise money because it, the, this business consumes money to get the message out you know, to get production built and things like that. And we're, you know, we run at a reasonable profit margin, but you spend so much back 
you know, to get the business going that you've got to be good at raising money. So if you've got a great idea and you believe in it and you're passionate about it and you think you can raise the money to go after it, I'd say go after it. It's, it's a real challenge, but it's also really, really rewarding. So um, I know that in the beginning, um, a few years ago, well, quite a few years ago, I remember doing a story because uh, some of the new seltzers were coming out and they were putting the cans in the grocery store or, or like your corner convenience store. Yeah. And so it was hard to tell the difference between what was an innocent seltzer mm -hmm. water versus what was alcoholic because, you know, they can blend in. So what has that part of your messaging been like so that you make sure that kids don't buy this? Yeah, so, I mean, we treat it just like any alcoholic. First of all, our package is a, you know, it's not a, a kid-looking package. It's a very formal alcohol-looking package, no right. cartoony type of stuff on it. And I will say, Pete, uh, for me, I was not allowed to drink coffee until I was out of high school. But now some of these kids are like drinking coffee at like 12, 13 and 14 years old. I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, so it, the coffee world has changed though. It has, yeah. So we, you know, what we do is we tell people to treat it like they would treat their, their bottle of vodka that they keep in their house. It's like you keep it in the same place, you keep it away from your kids, they don't go in the cabinet. I actually have teenagers and you know we have rules around where they can go and where they can't go and they they can't go in our liquor cabinet so well we were never allowed to either so one i i'll, I'll just go ahead and share the story when i was a high school uh -huh. and i was a cheerleader i remember um before a game uh, one of the um, cheerleaders, her parents were out of town, so we took all of our hairspray bottles oh, yeah. and emptied them <laughs> back when it was like, you know, aerosol, emptied them and filled it with the booze bottles and then filled the booze bottles with water, thinking their parents wouldn't know, which of course, of course they found out. But in yeah. this case, this is actually secure. You can't do that. Yeah, so um, again, you know, what we what we tell folks is treat it like you would treat the alcohol that you keep in your house. and. You know, we've been successful so far. No one has called us and said, hey, I got this problem. So, you know, we're pretty um, very conscious, socially conscious about what we're doing. You know, it's not, we don't make the drinks super strong. We would, you know, one of the things we talked about early in the development of the company is that it's not a get drunk drink. It's a enjoy yourself drink. Um, and they're actually uh, decaffeinated. All of our drinks are decaffeinated because when we talked to consumers, what we found out was that the primary usage occasion was after dinner. So some people use them as like a basically like a dessert drink. Um, some people, which I do, I, I enjoy one when I'm watching TV at night, relaxing on the couch. I use it, you know, for me, it's like my sleeping pill, basically. <laughs> so. We're talking with Pete uh, Borazan. He is the co-founder for the Cask and Kettle. Uh, are you guys one of the first companies to come up with this? Yeah, we are. And a matter of fact, we're the only company in the world right now that's making, you know, a, a pod that has alcohol in it. So when we first looked at doing it, we looked at powders. You know, could we make a powdered alcohol drink that you just diluted with water? And what we found out to get an ounce of alcohol in a cup, it would take seven cups to do that. And that's when we started looking at the concentrates. And then the side benefit of that is when you go to liquids, you don't bake all the flavor out of it like you do with a powder because powders are dried out and they do that with heat and it drives off a lot of the good flavors when that happens. So our drinks are really, really flavorful, like a great experience. So. so, but do you have a coffee background too? Because this is about the flavor of the coffee, right? And I know yeah, the is. one is a cider, but. Yeah, we've got four coffees and one cider. Um, the, yeah, a little bit. I've got a food background. I worked for Kraft and Nestle for about 30 years before I retired. I didn't spend any time in coffee, but what, at the consulting firm, JPG Resources in Battle Creek, where we all worked, we've got some great people with awesome palates um, who can really pick out flavors and pick out winning flavors. So, you know, for example, our Irish coffee, um, all natural, you know, no artificial colors, no artificial anything has 13 ingredients in it. And that's, you know, the fineness of the palate of the people that are designing the drinks. And it's a, a, so many people have come to us and said like, your Irish coffee is the best Irish coffee I've ever had. 
Um, and same for Mexican coffee. The mint and the blonde are kind of new, you know, so they don't have a benchmark, but a lot of people have benchmarks around Irish coffee and Mexican coffee. So many people come to us and say, best one I've ever had. Uh, Pete, just another minute or two here with you on the Make a Cast. Do you think this is going to be a new emerging um, arena for this hard ki- coffee or coffee with a kick? Yeah, so um, spike coffee or hard coffee is definitely an emerging trend. There's zero question that that's a trend that's on the uptick. The and we have trend, seen this with iced coffee. Like, I think yep. um, PBR is doing one um, and some of the other ones. But this is totally different. It is, yeah. So the, the coffee trend, the spike coffee trend is definitely on the rise. The ready-to-drink trend is the strongest trend in the whole spirits industry. That's the fastest-growing trend in the whole spirits industry. So we have both of those. The other thing that we found is that um, because we're a liquid, we offer a peel top. So if you don't have a Keurig, you can just dump the liquid in a mug and add hot water and you get the same thing. Eight ounces of hot water, you get the same thing. So one of the places that were very popular is Colorado and people take them hiking and they've got this little portable heater thing they use to make coffee, hot water, and they just dump this in there and they have a hot cocktail you know at the end of the day on the trail that is fascinating yeah it it, it really is fascinating the other way it's really good is iced so we don't talk about that a lot (laughs) because we're trying to drive the behavior around the keurig or the hot cocktail but the reality is when you put this in with six ounces of water and three ice cubes man it is like really really good Well, we're going to be looking for some. You know what, Pete? It's been so great having you. Any uh, last-minute things you want to add to the conversation before we say goodbye? No, we just, you know, we would uh, encourage all Michiganders to try us. We're a Michigan-based company. We do a lot of our our production is in Michigan and temperance. Um, We do a lot of our sourcing of products in Michigan, and, you know, we're continuing to drive sales here. But give us a try because we're so unique. You've never tasted anything like this before. You'll love us. So, uh, Pete, let me ask, were you a coffee drinker before? I was. We were all big coffee drinkers, which is kind of how the whole conversation started with us. Like, do you want a coffee? You know, so it all started with the coffee. And we're all big Keurig users, so it was just sort of a natural for us. Well, it, um, it's been great having you. And uh, thank you for your time. And on top of that, uh, thank you for your innovation, but keeping it here in the state of Michigan, because we need companies such as yours to support our communities as well. Thank you very much. We'll make sure I've got uh, some of your email addresses. We'll make sure we get some samples out to you so you can enjoy them on the show or after the show. (laughs)